Hey everyone, David Nagel here. Welcome to Building the Business of Your Dream, our summer series. This is a six part series and this is episode number four. And the episode is entitled, Visualizing Your Desire and Making It Real. On the last episode, we talked about beliefs and we talked about the idea of really starting to pay attention to how our mind is thinking um, and asking the questions about why am I thinking that, right? So you have an experience, you have an experience with your results, you have an experience with your circumstances, with your environment, with people, places, and things. There's all kinds of stuff that's happening in our life. When we stop and say, why am I thinking that? It brings some consciousness to ourselves. Now you may or may not get an answer right away. It's something that you have to continue to ask yourself over and over again. I'm gonna give you a little bit deeper of a question on this that you can start asking because it, um, it basically implies responsibility over what it is that you're experiencing. I created this, it totally changed my life 30 years ago. It's something that I still use today. Whenever I'm experiencing something, it can be, and it can be good or bad. I will admit I started this off, started off doing this with things that were negative that were happening in my life. But regardless, it induces consciousness. So here's what it, here's what it is. You look at whatever it is that you're experiencing, right? So you can look at things a different way. If you're feeling something emotional, you might look at it with your feelings, right? If you're looking at an object outside of yourself, you might, you know, visually look at it. You can intellectually look at something. But you ask this question, why am I choosing to have this experience? Why am I choosing to have this experience every single time? Now, this takes everything a little bit further. This will actually speed up the process because it brings in responsibility. It starts to program your mind with one of the most powerful things that you'll ever come across in your lifetime. And that is accepting responsibility and choosing not to just look at it, but to decide how you want to change something if, it, if in fact you do. You can't do that until you actually realize that you're choosing to have the experience that you're having. Now, I want to be very clear about something because there's a lot of teachings out there that are that are not accurate about this and it can be and it can literally become confusing. You are not responsible for what somebody else does, okay? Now, I'm not talking about a parent with children. That's a totally different scenario. Parents with children. With children, you're responsible both to and for what they do, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about you as an adult. Um, and if you're a young person, you as your own individual, okay? If you can get to the consciousness that you're choosing the experience that you're having, you're not responsible for what somebody else does, but you're responsible for how you react to it. You're responsible for how you respond to it, okay? You are now lifting yourself higher. You're getting so much closer to the point where you actually have the power to change it. And it doesn't matter what it is, you can change it. That power is within you. It doesn't just show up without any work, okay? You have to bring it up, you have to acknowledge it, you have to see the consciousness in it to be able to do it. And this is what's going to get you there. So the next piece that we do is working with your marvelous imagination. Uh, and let me tell you a little bit about imagination. You have seven intellectual factors um, and uh, I'll tell you more about what, what all of them are later, okay? But let's, I want to point out one that's very important for today's lesson, imagination. Um, imagination is one of your intellectual factors. With the use of our imagination, with the use of our of the intellectual factor imagination, we are engaging our conscious mind. So when I use this, when I start to imagine something, I'm using my conscious mind to imagine it. Okay, um, it's a part of my mind that starts to think. You'll see as children get older, the more and more vivid their imagination becomes. And they don't fight their imagination. Like kids will just imagine like crazy, right? It's, it's part of the growth of, the, of their consciousness is to be able to imagine. 
But when you engage your imagination and control it, uh, you're literally beginning the creative process from nothing, okay? There's nothing that you can't think about in your imagination that cannot be created in the material world. You're accessing the immaterial world in the ether, in the universe. You're accessing the knowledge that's in the universe. When you imagine, you're accessing that information. Your mind is putting together information to form a picture in your mind. And if you will hold that picture with another intellectual factor, which is your will, you will begin to manifest that in your life as a physical thing. And remember what I said, there's nothing that you can't imagine that you can't physically manifest in your life. Now, usually when I say this, it triggers a ton of doubt in people's minds. If that's actually happening with you, one of the things I suggest you look at is just all the different things that human beings have created all over the world for thousands and thousands of years. And ask yourself this question, where were these things before they created them? They were raw knowledge in the universe. They developed an image in their imagination of what it was that they wanted to create and they began to work on actual the process of creating the thing. The more knowledge we become aware of that's within the universe of the things that we can create, the faster we're creating things. We're, we're creating things faster now than we ever have in history. I mean, I think we probably create things faster in a day right now than maybe 200 years ago that took a year to, to create, if, if not even more than that. It's astronomical, and there do, there's no end to it. It just keeps going on. Anything the mind can conceive and believe, it can, it, it can achieve. Uh, it's a, that's a fascinating concept, right, that we can actually do that. Now, in the very first episode, we talked about desire, okay? Desire is the feeling that you have inside of yourself that is an internal acknowledgement of a purpose that's been given to you that is a spiritual function, okay? Now, if any of you have a trouble with the idea of spirit, you can use whatever word that you want here. I'm not trying to project a, a belief into you. This is just what I choose to believe, that it's a spiritual function. You could say it's an energetic function, whatever. The idea is that there's no form of life on this planet that does not know what its directive in life is except for human beings. And I believe that we do, it's just that it gets trained out of us before we have the ability to acknowledge that that's exactly what it is. So how do you find it? You start letting yourself feel the desire of your own heart in life. And you start asking the question, what is this? You start giving yourself permission, not only to feel it, but to allow it to stimulate your imagination to create the images of whatever you wanna be, do, and have in life. Now, when you do this, you're gonna, you generally, now I shouldn't say, well, I'll say generally, not everyone every time gets pushback on this from their subconscious, but most people do to some degree because you're going against the beliefs that were put in your subconscious mind that in some way suggests that you can't have it or you shouldn't be it or it's wrong to do it, whatever it is that it might be that you heard growing up. We get so many contradictory beliefs in our life, not just from the parents that raised us, but from society itself. You know, I mentioned money and the idea of money is that it's, it's, we're raised with it almost being like a necessary evil in life. We need it for absolutely everything in our life at this point of our social evolution. And yet, if you have too much, you're not a good person. If you had too much, you probably did something wrong to get it. If you had too much, you're not giving it to other people. If you have too much, you're keeping other people from having it. I mean, it goes, the nonsense around it goes on and on and on and on. And all of those stories are created by people that don't have it because they're unconscious and they don't understand that they have the ability to create that wealth in their life as much of it as they want. Why? Because like I mentioned on the last episode, in their mind, they see themselves as being victims. They truly believe in their heart that the reason they don't have something is because of one of these various other reasons that other people do. And it's a real tragedy. It's a real human tragedy because they didn't develop that belief on their own. They were raised with that belief. 
and it was reinforced by what other people told them. But the truth is it can change and it can change on a dime. Like I said before, I changed it. In my life, I changed it. I went from making 20,000 a year to 62,000 a year and I did it in a month just like that, not knowing any of this. I was playing around with the idea of mindset and I stumbled across the ideas which basically made me like what they call an unconscious competent and I started to win and I didn't know why I was winning. It was astounding. I spent the rest of my life deciding I was gonna figure out why I won and teach that to other people. And that's what I've been doing for the past 30 years. I've been learning and teaching other people how to use their marvelous mind to create what they want. So this desire then needs to be turned into an image. You take this desire and you turn it into an image. So the first thing that we do, right? So today when we get done with this class, write down the desires that you have, okay? So this is the way that I like to do this. Draw a line down a page, write desire on one side, and then write wish or want on the other side. The first thing is, is that everything that comes to your mind, right, that you would love to have, write it down under desire. Now here's what a desire is. I can't do without, it's so strong, I can't do without being, doing, or having this in my life. And I don't care what it is, as long as it's not something that's negative or hurts other people, you can be it, have it, or do it. If it doesn't have that intensity, then you're gonna move it over here into the column of wish or want. I'm not saying you can't have wishes or wants, but what we want to do for the consciousness sake is we want to separate those so we can think about them clearly. We want to bring good, conscious, clear thought, and we want to see it visually, or if you can't see, you want to be able to feel it. You want to be able to have an internal idea of what this actually is in your life. Is it a desire? Is it a burning hot desire? You, like, you, you want it more than anything? It doesn't go away. It doesn't change with the weather or it doesn't change by who you're around. You have a burning desire? Or is it something that would just be cool for you to have? That's that we call a wish or a want, right? So then you get both of these columns pretty clear. Take as long as you need to do this. Just do it. If you're finding that you're procrastinating on it, set a date, right? Give yourself, say, seven days, right? Put down, I'll have it done by this date. Look out, look forward seven days, put down that you'll have it done by, by that date and write it down. Now, the wishes or wants, we're just gonna push them to the side for the moment, okay? And we're gonna take whatever it is that we desire and we're gonna just draw a circle around it because that's gonna be the most important thing that we start working with, okay? The idea is that we want to form a mental picture. We want to form a mental picture of whatever that desire is. And what we want to do is build that image in our conscious mind. And after we build the image in our conscious mind, we want to impress that image onto the subconscious mind. So all the beliefs that you have in your subconscious mind are images that were impressed but you generally got them from other people, like I've mentioned before. And through the, through the constant spaced repetition of being said, being told, this is a spoon, or this is a fork, or this is a pen, or the, you know, whatever it is that you were told about everything in your life, you heard it, it, we didn't hear it just once, you heard it over and over and over and over again. That's called constant spaced repetition. That's how the subconscious mind is programmed. Now. Prior to age seven, what did we say about the subconscious mind? I'll just draw a miniature one here, okay, like this. Prior to age seven, the subconscious mind didn't have the ability to reject an idea. To get a little deeper on that, the only way it could reject an idea is if you start forming the conscious mind because what is one of the faculties of your, sub, of your conscious mind? It has the ability to choose. It has the ability to think. So in order to reject something, you have to be able to think about what it is that you're experiencing. You have to choose whether or not you wanna take it on as a belief, and then you can accept it or reject it. So in our early years, all this stuff that was going on, it just went in, and like I said, 
on the last episode, it became fixed. And those fixed, beca- those fixed ideas became habits. Habits are the constant manifestation from your subconscious mind to create your reality the way that it is. And you, so think about this. There's no effort in that. You do that every day, all day, right? This is why most people's lives don't change all that much because they're on autopilot with their subconscious mind. Their subconscious mind just keeps creating the same thing day after day after day after day after day. And the longer that happens over a a significant period of years, the more it occurs, the more people will think that they can't get out, that that, that that will be it. Some people break out because there's some kind of tragedy or trauma. Uh, or big change that happens in their life that they really didn't have anything to do with. Uh, somebody, somebody leaves them, somebody dies, somebody gets sick, they get sick, they overcome a significant illness, they, get, they lose a job, they lose a business, whatever. And, they, and then that causes them to start thinking differently about the situation that they're in and they start to come to the conscious realization that they may want to choose something different for themselves. But the average individual doesn't do that because their life gets in this rut that just keeps happening over and over and over again. And they think the same things over and over and over again. Not only do they think the same things over and over and over again, but they experience the results of those things over and over and over again. That intensifies and reinforces the meanings and the beliefs in the subconscious mind. So building this image and then taking this image and impressing it on the subconscious mind, the idea is that we want to do it till it's strong enough that it cancels out the beliefs that are manifesting the things that we don't want in our life. This is so very important. The question then is how do I use visualization to impress it upon my subconscious so that the new image of my life takes over and I start manifesting that on a regular basis. We go back to our stick person with the conscious, the subconscious, and the body. Conscious, subconscious, body. Let's remember the body is the material medium in which we take action on the ideas that are being projected from our conscious or our subconscious mind. So here's where we're at with this. We're gonna take the desire here. We're gonna allow it to build. Now the desire is just a feeling, okay? It's a feeling that talks to us. It's not something that we generally have well-formed because if you did have it well-formed, you'd probably be manifesting whatever that desire is in your life. So as we allow it to come to the surface, we allow it to turn into an image, right? We start to notice what is it that it's saying that we want to be, do, or have. We build that image in our subconscious mind, our conscious mind, and then we do something very interesting, okay? We get emotionally... involved in this image. In other words, we start to, we start to take this image. Let's, let's take something simple. Okay? Let's say you want a, a new car. Let's say you want a new house. Not only do you see the new car, the new house, but you see yourself driving the new car from first person, as if you're sitting behind the wheel and looking out the front window. You see yourself living in your new house as if you were actually in there, walking from the living room to the kitchen to the bedroom to you know the backyard, whatever. You see yourself in it. As you do that, you allow yourself to get emotionally involved in the thing as if you had it. The more you do this and the more emotion that you create, the more that image gets sunk deep into your subconscious mind And as it does, what did I tell you on the last episode? Whatever goes into your subconscious mind must instantly start to manifest itself in the most convenient physical form that it can outside of yourself, okay? And we're using constant spaced repetition to do this. As we get emotionally involved, we're increasing the process. There is another process by which the subconscious mind can get programmed and that's called a sudden emotional impact. In other words, that's kind of like how a lot of fears happen. That's why they say like if you fall off a horse, get back on, right? If you experience a sudden fear, 
your, sub, your conscious, it happens so fast, your conscious mind doesn't have the ability to reject it, and bam, it goes right into your subconscious mind and it starts to stick. We just don't want to give that a breeding ground to continue on for a period of time. So we take this image and we get emotionally involved in it. Now, here's something else about the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is also known as the feeling mind or the emotional mind. The feeling or the emotional mind. So what's cool about this is the emotions that you're associating with these images are already in, in you. The emotions are part of who you are. Remember, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the desire is all coming from this desire that's in your, that's in your subconscious mind. The early Greeks that called this the heart of hearts. It's the part of you that is totally attracted and kind of points the way of your life in the direction of something. Human beings, if, they were, if, and if they're given the right set of circumstances, when they come in contact with the thing that is going to mean something significant in their life, they recognize it, right? It's like a magnet going to steel. They're just drawn to it. Nobody knows why because very, usually when this first happens is when, it, when somebody's a child. Now, if they don't, if they can't spend significant time with it where they can literally associate good meanings to this, if it's something that is either inconvenient for the family or the parents don't have the money or the parents don't think the child should be doing that, the parents will steer the kid away from it and they won't get a chance to actually create a meaning of how important this desire is in this child's life. But I've interviewed thousands of people over the years that literally said something to me like this, David, I knew exactly what I was going to do be when I was a kid and I was exposed to X, whatever, whatever X is, whether they were a musician or in sports or a race car driver, you name it. They, they were exposed to it at some point as a child and they instantly knew that's what they were going to do. And, and think about, they know this, it's, it's entirely emotional. They have no idea what goes with it. They don't know the sacrifices that have to be made. They don't know the discipline that has to be developed. They have no idea what the cost of any of it is. It's purely part of that spiritual DNA that is just drawn to the thing. Now, if you didn't have an experience like that as a child, don't worry about it. It's, it's not important. The point, the reason that I'm bringing it up is because that the idea was, the original idea was that we get exposed to it at some point in our childhood. However, most of the people that I work with didn't have this experience. It's something that they know is inside of them and they begin to search for it as an adult. I've worked with people in their 80s and 90s that just came into their purpose. They just found out what their desire was and they, they come to me and ask me to help them manifest that in their life. What do I have to do to create my life over again at this point? So there's no age limit. As long as you're walking and breathing, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. But as you develop this image, you impress it into the subconscious mind over and over and over again. Now, here's the part that is absolutely incredible about this. It's, also, it's incredible, but it's also dangerous. Let me give you the danger part. The danger part is this. Let's say you have this desire and you, have, and you start to build this image, and all of a sudden your mind starts going, yeah, wait a minute. How do you think you're going to do this? And your mind's going, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Where do you think you're going to get the money to do this? Who's going to go along with you on this? Or whatever your subconscious mind starts saying. This happens all the time the time. And it happens not just with people visualizing the image of what they want to create in their life, but basically anytime somebody is going to change something that originally was anchored in oops, over here by the belief. Okay, If we have a belief that contradicts the thing that you're thinking, the subconscious mind does not know what this new thing is. And the subconscious mind is only concerned with you surviving, staying alive. It's not concerned with anything else. It's not concerned with you being happy or healthy or wealthy or anything. It just goes, this is different. I don't have a pattern to deal with it. So let's try to move him off of that so that they get stuck going to do the same thing over and over again. When those thoughts and those ideas start to come to you, okay, 
you have to real you have to give them no power. You give them absolutely no attention. If you give them attention, they grow, and what happens is it causes a lapse in you building the image, and then we get into something called procrastination, and eventually you'll talk yourself out of it, okay? So the idea is that as you do this, when how, so what started this, how? That's what started it, thinking, how am I, how am I gonna do this? How in the hell am I gonna do this? Here's the good news, you don't need to know how you're going to do it. You absolutely do not need to know. The first step after we build the image is called decision. Decision is the first step after we get clear on what it is that we want. We say, I will be, do, or have this thing, period. That's the decision that I'm making for myself. Now, you were probably raised, you can't make a decision until you know the how. That is so backwards, it's unbelievable. There's no other form of life that operates that way. Absolutely none. The way that I learned this was that the how is God's job, okay, or the universe's job, whatever you feel like calling it. It's, that's not your responsibility, the how. What's our greatest power? Our ability to choose. That means we use our greatest power to do the first step, to make the decision. Once you make the decision, you're basically saying, I'm not going backwards. Think about that. I'm making a decision to go after the thing that I want. I am not making a decision to go backwards or not go after the thing that I want. So as I do that, I program my mind and my senses and my, the energy in my body to start looking for the how. And the how every single time will show up in your life. And it'll happen fast. It will definitely happen fast. The only time that it doesn't happen fast is if you don't make a decision. Decision comes from the Latin root, uh, the Latin root decire, which means to cut away from. In other words, there's no other option. I'm not giving myself an option. I'm making a decision to do this. Most people don't make decisions that way. They make decisions until something tomorrow becomes uncomfortable and then they go back on what it is that they said. In the, in, so when I, we talked about the Elite Mind 90 Day program, the foundation of that program is to teach a person not only, only how to make a decision, but to keep their word for 90 days while they actually program their mind with the image of the thing that they want so they can start manifesting it in their life. So in other words, this new, this, this desire becomes destiny. And that's what we want to do. The imagination process, taking an image, getting emotionally involved in it, anchoring it in the subconscious mind, allows you to turn desire into destiny. And that's the key. When we do that, when we turn desire into destiny, the how shows up, the people show up, the resources show up, the money shows up. Every single thing that you need begins to show up in your life. You begin to see it. You begin to sense it. You can feel it. You learn how to use it. You discipline yourself in the process and you manifest whatever it is that you want. No question about it. So the key today is this. You want to do the exercise. Let me just go back one slide here. You want to write down everything that you think is a desire. Separate wishes or wants from the desire. Build a mental image of the picture, right, that you want in your conscious mind. Get emotionally involved in it. The idea is that we stay in what's called a constant state of expectation of the thing that we want. It's almost like we desire the desire. The best way to remember how to stay in a constant state of expectation of the thing that you want is to practice gratitude before you get it. In other words, you say, I'm so happy and grateful now that I have this thing in my life. That is, that is the... the, the the conscious part of your mind and the emotional part of your mind and the energetic part of your mind and body creating the expectation of the thing that we want in life. That's how a human being manifests everything. We either do it consciously or we do it unconsciously. Remember, all the things that you're creating in your life right now that you seem to do without any apparent effort, it follows the same set of rules. You're just doing it unconsciously. You're not in conscious control of it because you've been exposed to it most of your life or you've created something into a habit and it just keeps creating itself over and over and over again. Do this exercise, get it done, and I will see you on the next episode, which will be 
Number five, this is David Nagel. Have an amazing day.